This is Roy Canning, and today we're taking a look at the Vision Hero Pack for Marvel Champions. Let's get into it. All right, let's take a look at Vision here. So, of course, we start as Alter Ego Vision with three recovery. Um, and then he has an android. And then when you are in dense mass form, you get plus two recovery while you're on this side. And then when you're in intangible form, you get plus one hand size. Speaking of which, he only has a hand size of five and hit points of 11. And then set up, put your mass form upgrade into play, intangible side face up. Let's go ahead and look at that. So this is the mass upgrade. So this kind of starts into play with vision. Um, so as an upgrade, intangible, um, mass form permanent. Vision cannot attack or defend. Reduce the amount of damage vision takes by two um, from each attack by two. So you can kind of have vision not being taking much damage from attacks while he's in this intangible form. Let's take a look at vision's other side to see what all can do with this um, card. Um, vision has two thwart, zero attack, and zero defense. Okay, so vision's a little bit different here, as we notice. Um, then density manipulation action change to mass form by flipping your mass form upgrade over limit once per round. So here's the mass form card. Um, so you can flip this over once per round. So if you take the action to flip this over, then you can become dense. In dense form, um, while your hero vision, or your, while in hero form, vision gains plus two attack and plus two defense. Um, after you change to mass form, draw a card. So you can immediately draw another card and your hand size is five on this side as well. So this will let you, when you flip back over to this side, you get to draw an extra card. So that's pretty cool. And it actually gives you an attack and a defense, which you didn't have before. So while you're on this side, um, you're gonna be taking less damage. While you're on this side, you're actually gonna have your stats, attack and defense. But that's not all. This will be coming into play quite a bit as we look at the rest of Vision's cards. So um, Vision's Solar Gem upgrade, this is a two cost upgrade a um, vision gains the aerial trait so he has aerial then um exhaust this and generate a wild resource that's a pretty good resource giving upgrade then we have density control this is an upgrade after you change to mass form discard this card and add a vision event from your discard pile to your hand cool so you can get your events back out of the discard pile but they go directly into your hand that's pretty awesome for a one cost upgrade um, that's whenever you're changing um, then density control again. So you have two of these that you can exhaust to be able to get those events back out of the discard pile. Then visions cape. This is a two cost upgrade. While you're in dense mass form, you gain retaliate one. While you're in tangible mass form, you gain stalwart, which means you can't be um, confused or stunned. So that's pretty cool. So depending on which side you're on from your uh, dense or intangible, you're going to have different abilities on visions cape there. Um, then um, 616 Hickory Branch Lane. This is a one cost support. Um, Alter Ego Action exhausts this and search your discard pile for an Android ally and add it to your hand. Cool, so you can get Android allies. Well, we'll have to see if there's any of those in this deck, which I'm sure there are plenty. Um, then there is a three cost event here. This is Solar Beam, Hero Action. If Vision is in dense mass form, um, deal seven damage to an enemy. Seems good. Um, then if your hero action thwart, if vision is an intangible mass form, remove five threat from a scheme. So Silver Beam can be very, um, very versatile depending on whether you are in dense or intangible mass form. So changing your density is what he is all about. So you get three of those. So that's pretty awesome. Normally most heroes have like a couple of those attacks that can do high amounts of damage. He has, he has even more. Um, this is a two cost event. Um, super or super dense strike play only if vision is in dense mass form um, deal five damage to an enemy this attack gains piercing so it can go straight through toughness if you needed to um, so you get two of those then mass increase this is a one cost event play only if you're in dense mass form and um, when vision defends prevent all damage from that attack this is an interrupt by the way um, stun the attacking enemy after that attack resolves so not only do you stop him from doing damage to you you can also stun him and he won't be attacking you next turn if you're in solo or the next player um, if you are um, playing multiplayer. Um, then there's a phase disruption. This is a two cost event. Play only if vision is in intangible mode. Um, hero action confuse the enemy. 
choose an attachment um, on that enemy with the hero text or hero response and discard that attachment. A lot of times they'll have weapons and things like that or different things like that that can mess stuff up. This will allow you to get rid of cards off of the enemy. That's really cool. I'm just passing through. This is a one cost event play only if you're an intangible mass form. Um, remove three threat from the scheme, ignoring the patrol keyword and crisis icons. So those are the things that make it so you can't remove stuff from a scheme. This can just let you go straight through those defenses and still remove the threat which seems awesome. And you have a couple of those. And then here is a Android ally. It is a uh, Vivian. It is a two cost ally, one thwart, one attack. And then while you're in intangible mass form, it gets plus two thwart. While you're in dense mass form, plus two attack. She only has two hit points, but she'll be able to hit for three on either of those stats. It's pretty awesome, depending on which form you're in. Um, then um, Victor um, here is a two cost ally. Zero thwart and zero attack. Okay. Um, reduce the amount of damage um, Victor takes by one for each attack. So this guy isn't going to be helping you with the scheme unless you have some way to buff him. Um, but he's going. you can basically use him to uh, be kind of a little bit of a decoy and take some damage for you. And the damage he's taking is being reduced each time he takes it. That's pretty good. Um, then Protector here is a four cross ally. One thwart, three attack, but two consequential damage. Um, when you would take any amount of damage, spend a science resource and reduce the amount by one limit once per round. So you can keep her in play a little bit longer um, if you're spending the resources. Maybe even preventing some of that consequential damage. Then uh, jo Jocasta, I think is the name here, a three cost ally, two thwart, two consequential damage, one attack, one consequential damage. You may play an event attached as if it were in your hand. Um, after it enters play, you get to choose a defense event from your discard pile and add it to her face down. So she's very much like how the Black Panther card worked in the War Machine pack, but she works with the um, defense cards, not just protection cards or, or leadership cards. It is now defense cards. That's cool. Um, Flow Like Water is a two-cost upgrade for protection here. Um, play under a player's control, maximum per player. After you play a defense card, um, deal one damage to the attacking enemy. So if you're playing with a whole bunch of defense cards, you'll be able to ping them back for a bunch of damage. And you have three of those you can get into play. If you're able to have all three of those out, you're going to be able to ping them for a bunch of damage. Um, then a zero cost event here. This is a defense card by itself. Um, hero interrupt. When a boost card on an enemy, um, when a boost card on an enemy attacking you would be turned face up, discard it instead. That's awesome. Takes all the guesswork out of it and just gets rid of their boost card. And it's defense, so it helps trigger a bunch of your other stuff. A one cost event, get behind me. We've seen this a ton of times. And when a treachery card is revealed um, from the encounter deck, cancel its win reveal effect. The villain attacks you instead. So you can stop those things. And then Indomitable, you can ready your guy. It's an upgrade that can ready. And then sidestep, um, when you would take any amount of damage, prevent three of that damage. If you pay for this card using a energy resource, deal one damage to the enemy. You get three of those also. And then here is a resource for protection. Um, it is at max one per deck. After you spin this card, heal one damage to you from your identity. Cool, a little healing card there. Then another android ally, a two cost ally here. One thwart, one attack. When machine man enter or when machine man attacks or thwarts, spin up to three resources of any type. Machine man gets plus one thwart and plus one attack for each resource spent this way. Cool, so you can. You can spend a whole bunch of uh, your cards out of your hand to boost him up um, and make him stronger. Then uh, this is a one cost event here, Reboot. Um, ready a friendly android character and heal one damage from it. That seems awesome. Um, yeah. And then you get three of those to ready some androids. Um, then we have Avengers Mansion, which we've seen tons of times. Exhaust and some draw some cards. Then energy, strength, and genius. Then we have the obligation for vision, which is going to do things that obligations mostly normally do. Um, messes you up. This is one of those that kind of sticks in play. Then Ultron is the bad guy against vision here, but we don't want to spoil too much about the stuff, but it's all very Ultron themed stuff if he comes out as your nemesis um, with that Shadows of the Past. Then support here, uh, assault training. Um, exhaust this card, remove one training counter from it, choose an aggression card, red event, from your discard pile and shuffle it into your deck. 
This is awesome. You can do that twice, so you can get some of those um, cards back from the aggression. Um, then chance encounter. Attach this side scheme. Uh, max one per scheme. When attached, um, scheme is defeated. Search your deck and discard pile for an ally and add it to your hand and shuffle your deck. So this allows you to get allies into play. Um, and then a four cost event, joining forces, alliance. Um, as a group, the players put a total of one Avenger ally and one Guardian ally into play from their hands. This would be great in a big multiplayer game, being able to just cheat those allies into play when you're still paying four for it, but you're able to get cool allies into play. That's a lot of cooperation in a cooperative game, which is a lot of fun. And then a zero cost event, meditation, exhaust your alter ego, play a card from your hand, reducing its resource cost by three. I love the idea of cards like this that allow you to play things for cheaper. Um, pretty cool stuff there. So that is Vision with his dense and intangible stuff going on there. Let's take a look at my thoughts. So Vision's main thing here is that he has the whole intangible mass or like dense mass that he's dealing with going back and forth from. It's kind of cool that he can kind of switch back and forth each turn and you have this interesting puzzle of like when you're going to go down and be able to do stuff to draw extra cards. His alter ego only lets you draw five cards, normally it's six, but if you're in intangible form you're able to draw back up more cards and then when you flip back up you could flip up to dense form and then draw an extra card. So you have those interesting turns where it's like normally in this game you're going to have six cards in your hand on a turn without any other stuff in there. In this game, right at the beginning of the game, you can kind of have seven cards, which can be really cool with uh, Vision because he has a lot of things to play out. He also has a bunch of things that let you, if you're flipping forms back and forth, you can draw events back up into your hand, so giving you more resources to use. It's kind of interesting the way that this guy might be able to kind of lay low if you need him to. You could be in intangible form, thwarting stuff away, you're not going to be able to attack or defend, but you're able to prevent damage from yourself and kind of be like a support type hero as you're a little bit more in the background not taking much damage. It's cool that he comes with a ton of different android allies and he has cards that kind of utilize those android allies um, that have some really cool special abilities. Um, he's very much about like that defense and like messing up the enemy a little bit. He's able to remove cards from the enemy or maybe give them a little bit of status effects here and there, which also can help the entire team as you're playing out against the villain. I don't know if Vision is one that I would want to solo as much. He feels more like a team player or maybe more of a supporting character instead of like the main hero that you're playing with. But I do really enjoy Vision. Um, and, if, and if that concept kind of is intriguing to you, you probably want to check this out. It gives you that extra step of figuring out which form you want him to be in as you're flipping back and forth. But yeah, definitely have enjoyed Vision. Um, I think this is going to get a seal of approval for me. Definitely a fun deck to play around with if you enjoy ma um, enjoy Marvel Champions. I ha I'm getting all of the Marvel Champions stuff because I still love the game, really enjoy it. Um, which character would you most like to see added to Marvel Champions? Let me know in the comments down below. It's been a lot of fun going through all these decks and enjoying all the different variety that they add to the game. Well, thanks so much for joining me here. I'll make sure to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and I'll see you on the next one.